Welcome to our service this morning. I'm excited about what God would have us here this morning. I tell you myself, I was so encouraged as I, as I learned, as I delved into the Word of God and researched, and, and God, the Spirit of God opened my eyes to angles that I had never seen before. Many of you will be familiar with the story today. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray as we come to the word of God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word, at the entrance of your word, brings light. Your word says, oh God, Jesus, you said the letter killeth, but the spirit quickeneth. We ask, oh God, that your word today will bring the spirit to quicken within us, Lord. Let it not be a word that kills. Let it not be a logos, Lord. Let it be a rima for somebody's season in life. Let it come to encourage. Let it come to shopping. Let it come to exhort. Let it come, oh God, to, to lift us up from our doldrums, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, bless the speaker, bless the hearers. Whoever hears this word, may they not rest on their laurels. May they be challenged to go further and higher in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so as I was saying, today's scripture will be known to most of us. Amen. You know, a, a couple of weeks ago, we did um, the man who was... Um, left in the tomb, amen, left abandoned by everybody, the man who was self-harming, who Jesus went through the storms to go and rescue, to, to, to reach out to him and restore him to his family. And we talked about how the man wanted to follow Jesus, amen, after he was healed and came to his mind, amen, how he wanted and Jesus forbade him, and Jesus said, no, 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 you go home. Your children miss you. Now, that was a hint already about how Jesus' ministry was into restoration, restoring lives, and restoring broken down relationships, bringing back together that which is separated. Amen? And it's amazing that in today's text that we come to in Luke, you see, Luke is a doctor, Amen? I, 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 and he puts the scripture in sandwich between the story we read about Jesus healing um, the, 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 the man who was uh, invaded by legion demons, uh, who Jesus healed, and, and uh, another man, uh, Jairus, who is a centurion, who has servants, amen. And, 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 and in between those two stories, Jairus has lost his only child, his only daughter. Or is when at the point that Jairus comes to Jesus, this daughter is severely sick. And whilst um, the people were still talking, um, Jairus was told um, that, that she's dead anyway. There's no point in worrying the master. You know, amen. And, and so. In between those two stories comes the story of the woman. And this woman is, uh, you know, is, is, is not only somebody who, has, who is desperate, amen? She is courageous, amen? So as we were looking at what are the qualities that we will need as, as, as this lockdown breaks, as we get back to normality, we, we, we see the story of this woman as having the qualities that we will need going forward. Amen? Because this woman, the, 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 I'm told that the, she, 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 she has been isolated. Because when you have an issue of blood, amen, if, if you're suffering from an issue of blood, in, in the context of Israel then, you are isolated. You are, you are locked out. You, 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 nobody touches you. You are untouchable. Are you with me? You are, you, you, you're seen as a, a stigma against the society. So you are abandoned, you, 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 you're locked down, you're not to come into, you stay at home, hallelujah, for 18 years. Some of us are struggling, and most of us are, naturally, because you're a human being. Being only just a year, 
Can you imagine this woman for 18 years? Untouched, unhugged, no touch, no, don't, don't touch by anybody. Yeah? Not even bum. She, she is totally cut off from civilization, from community, because of what she's suffering. And we still live in a society where people are judged and condemned because of things that they have no control over, issues that they, they didn't bring on themselves, things that we, we are not told of the cause of this woman's bleeding. But what we are told is that she's tried to visit as many doctors. She's done what she can as a human being to try and cure, to get a cure. Amen. She spent many, uh, a lot of money going to many doctors. And the Bible tells me that her situation was getting from better to worse. Have you been there where you, you are suffering from something? And, and you've done all you can, and you're going wherever people give you hints that it could get better. You've done all your best, and yet the thing is going from bad to worse. And to top everything, they say, keep away from people. Keep away from people because you 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 haven't you you don't fit that your testimony stinks. Hallelujah. Glory to God, and this woman is doing all she can. And so you can imagine the kind of courage she must have mastered to come out of home. There is a threat that if you break the if you break if you if you break the rules, that's what that's what my Hancock says. Ten years. Hello. He says, if you break the rule. We will put you in quarantine. We'll put you in a hotel. She wasn't put in a hotel. Glory to God. She was so desperate that she, 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 would, she would pay whatever, whatever fine or sentence of jail the community will put on her. She said, I'm better off getting fined and dying in this state. Oh, that somebody will refuse to die in their state and refuse to accept, hallelujah, this is the status quo that has been imposed on you by your situation. Hallelujah. So this woman must have had a lot of determination and courage. Amen. Jesus tells her she has faith. Your faith. We know, we know, we know because... Listen, there's no teaching anywhere where Jesus teaches that my garment will heal you. Did Jesus himself know that his garment will heal, will heal? That's for you to go and ponder. When was the last time Jesus taught? Amen. So this woman by herself is so desperate for God that she's ready to try unconventional ways of reaching out to God and touching God. Oh, that there will be somebody who is so desperate in their situation that they are ready to try any unconventional means to get hold of God, get hold of Jehovah. You hold on the throne of grace and say, God, you got to help me, Lord. Lord, you got to help me. You got to help me, Lord. Somebody said, wake up, Jesus. That's Peter's cry. He was perishing. That was the story, the, the story before this one. Jesus, Peter cries out in the story. He said, Jesus, please wake up. Isn't it, isn't it about time? You cry out in your need and say, Jesus, in case you're sleeping, I need you to wake up. Master, I don't doubt that you are suffering. In case, just in case you're sleeping, please wake up. Hallelujah. And, and, and in the story, we see the dismissiveness of the disciples. When Jesus says, who touched me? Hallelujah. Would you touch heaven? For heaven to feel your touch. Some of us let us pray. 
You're, 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 you're silent and you have just gone to sleep. If you are desperate, heaven will hear your voice. Are you with me? Hallelujah. If the situation is desperate, even a needle, when I, I, I have a phobia, no, I fear a needle, my wife will tell you. If that needle comes near me, I scream, I go, ah! even before it, it, it hit me. How much more, how desperate is your situation? You, mean that you will not cry out to Jesus. But this woman in her pain, her testimony, amen, the, 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 the disciples were dismissive of her pain and her hurt. Her test, and they said to Jesus, nobody touched you. People are pushing around and say, you touched me. Amen. But here's the thing. So this woman teaches us in her story that if we are going to go forward, we need a level of courage that defies the norm. What, what was the norm? The old norm. Amen. We need a level of determination to propel us one foot forward, one foot forward at a time, one foot forward, one foot forward, carry on marching on. Amen. And we need a level of desperation that to say, God, we don't want to be here again. We are, we are fed up. Amen. God, we, 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 we want what is next. We, we are fed up with being in the state. 18 years on, on isolation. 18 years untouched, 18 years unhugged, 18 years without contact. Amen. And she gets to a state where she is fed up. Unless you get to a state where you're fed up with your condition, you may accept it and die in it. Hallelujah. So let's get a level of desperation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But Imagine this woman again. Just, just this woman encourages me so much. Amen. Can you imagine, as I mentioned, her courage and her determination? Why didn't she tell other people? Amen. She must have been worried, amen, about the vulnerability and, and even the, 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 the fact that people will say, you're meant to be isolated. You're meant to be indoors. You're breaking. Hello. You're breaking the law. You're breaking the rules. You are defiling somebody by engaging. Can you imagine? That speaks to me about people who might be in the community. Amen. Who might be carrying hurt and pain. Secret hurt, secret pain. Nobody knows what goes behind closed doors. And this will may have been carrying it throughout the lockdown. Whether it's domestic violence, whether it's abuse, whatever, that there will be people with all kinds of, of vulnerability worried about telling other people and what the reaction of those people might be. We have to Come with grace. If we say we are, we are good news people, we are gospel people, then we should come offering grace. Whether, wherever there is pain, wherever there is hurt, we should come offering and not be dismissive like the disciples were. Amen. We should open our doors. Amen. Have coffee with somebody and say, do you want to chat? Do you want, I, I'll have coffee with you. Just create space. Amen. Because people have lost, we have lost 100,000 plus people. Some of these people are fathers, mothers, grandmothers, granddads, siblings. Some people who want to unburden 
Amen. People will want to engage and talk and have a chat. But they know the church that was before the lockdown. They know what was the normal church that you could not open up. Amen. So let's 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 create a space where people can be vulnerable. Where people will not be worried about opening up. But here's the thing. That if you, the, the, the story is so impactful to me. If Jesus said nothing, you know Jesus said who touched me. If Jesus said nothing, nobody would be none the wiser. Yeah? Nobody would know. That healing has taken place. Nobody would know that somebody touched the hem of Jesus' garment. Nobody would know that God heals through touching of Jesus' garment. But you know, Jesus said, who touched me? Amen. He said, who touched me? Because you see, people come to the church through the back door, as this woman did. People come to God through some sneaky ways. Even because they are embarrassed about what is going on. So they come in and they, and they weave in unknown to the spiritual untrained spiritual eyes. But, but, but in their heart, they're crying out. Within them, they're carrying burdens. Amen? They just want a touch from God and healing and so that they can go. Amen? But to Jesus, the heal healing is not the most important thing to him. Amen? Healing will happen, yes. But Jesus is more interested in relationship. Amen? That's why Jesus says, who touched me? Hallelujah. If he didn't ask who touched me, nobody would know that anything had happened. Amen. But Jesus says, listen, woman, you have had your healing. Because the woman felt she was, she, she could feel the healing go down her body as she received power from Jesus. But Jesus didn't just want her to she wants to know, be in a relationship. Who are you? Hallelujah. Yes, I will heal you. Amen. I know you just come for healing, but I'm more interested in knowing who you are. Jesus says, tell me who you are. Tell me your story. Come, let's have conversation. Unpack. Hallelujah. So Jesus says to this woman, listen, you have received your healing. But you are now in a relationship. You are a daughter. Glory to God. You are a daughter. You belong. You belong. You belong. You, be, you, you Anytime you can come in and you don't have to come through the back door, Jesus says. You can come and go anytime. This house is yours. You are a daughter. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. This is Jesus Remember the story before this one was about Jesus restoring a man who had been cut off from society. Yeah? Abandoned, uh, living by the graveside, self-harming himself. And Jesus heals him. And the first thing Jesus says, or the last thing Jesus says to him was, go, go home to your family. Go back to your family. Your children are missing you. Go back home. This is my Jesus. He's interested in restoring relationships. This woman who's been isolated, abandoned, ostracized by the society, cut off, yeah, locked down, locked out, keep away 18 years, untouched by anybody. In her desperation, she touches Jesus. Amen. And Jesus says to her, <laughs> You are healed, amen, but I'm not interested in the healing. I'm interested in a relationship with you. You're a daughter. 
of Abraham. You are a daughter. Hallelujah. And so he, he brings her into the fold of God. He says, you don't need to stay away. You're welcome in any time. Pop in. Hallelujah. That, that, that is, this is Jesus. That's what he's asking you and I to do. Many of us are going on the street. We want to heal people. Yes, yeah, street healing. There's nothing wrong with street healing, but a lot of it, some of it is embarrassing. What goes on there? All the gimmicks. And then so you go, oh, sit down, let's touch your head. And then it be, you become the center of focus. It's all about you. You are a healer, faith healer. Really? God does the healing. But you are ready to take the center stage. My Jesus says, listen, that's all gimmicks. He says deliverance is the children's bread. Hallelujah. Amen. The God wants a relationship with the people. That's why he's, he's healing them. He says, go, for your faith has made you whole. You, you, you have been made well. God is interested in the wholeness, the whole picture. The wholeness of people. Amen. Let's stop all these nonsense gimmicks. When we tell people, raise your hand, raise your hand, see, see how you raise, how do you feel now? That's nonsense. That's nonsense. I'm not saying God heals, but God is more interested in a relationship with those people. In their wellness, in the fact that it is God heals in his own time. The Bible said in his time he makes all things beautiful. So those people should be able to come into a relationship and a position and a place where they go, God, even if you don't heal this hand, I'm all right. I'm okay, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That's amazing faith. That's amazing faith. So let's be church that Jesus calls us to be, the good news people. Amen. Wangalos, we are meant to be the good news. And finally, as I come to the close of my uh, sermon this morning, let's know that there's no one way to approach the throne of grace. Hallelujah. There are several ways. Jairus is so rich that he can send servants to go and summon Jesus, to run errands for him. This woman is so poor, she has nobody to go to Jesus for. Hallelujah. She has to find a way. You can't touch the, the bottom of somebody's trousers or garment unless you are on your belly. Unless you're down, flat out. And so in her desperation, she's flat out and reaches out for Jesus in her desperation. Hallelujah. And God says, listen, if you, if you have to come in desperation, come. Amen. If there's anything that you need from God, amen. Maybe you've tried one way of praying and praying and praying and nothing is changing. It happened. Jesus was coming down the mountain and the disciples said, Master, we, we, we have cast out, we have, we've tried to heal this boy. Why could we not? And Jesus said, some of these things do not go as a by praying and fasting. Change the tactics. Hallelujah. If you have never fasted before, why haven't you? If you're that desperate for a change. Amen. If you've never prayed out loud, why haven't you? If you are that desperate for a change. Why haven't you changed the way you, you're praying the same way you haven't seen a change? Maybe. Maybe. I'm just saying maybe. You need to change. Amen. Glory to God. As a, God bless you and uh, we'll meet again next week. But I pray that 
you are able to step out there and reach out for Jesus. Get hold of Jesus. Get hold of him. Be desperate for him. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, God bless you.